we're looking on selection construct. Um, last week, what we would have looked at is the basic, which is sequence. There's no nothing difficult. It is basically input processing output. That's your sequence control structure. So today we are moving on to selection. So these are our objectives for today. We're going to describe control structures, define selection control structure, list three types of selection control structure, and we are going to use selection control structure in algorithm. All right. Good. So control structures now. Control structures are the way in which our algorithms are structured. Um, what are the different components in there? Now we have various types. Our control structure are instructions or statements that determine the flow or flow um, of the algorithm. So last week when we had our first class we were looking on basically sequence. Sequence is, sequence is your basic, would include the basic operations of your computer system. So it's going to have, it's going to have input, processing, output, nothing more, nothing less. It will only show that. However, your computer can do much more things, a lot of things, including, which we're going to look on basically for the other control structures. So let's look on the types. So there are three basic control structures. We have sequence, selection, repetition, and repetition is the same thing as iteration or loops. So today, last week we looked on sequence and we said that sequence is going to have your three basic computer operations, which is input, processing, and output. It doesn't include anything else. Now, whenever you have a problem, there are times when it will have to select data between one or two options. And that's where your selection comes into play. So three basic control structures, sequence, straightforward, three basic um, computer operations. That is your input processing output. Selection, that has to do with selecting the, um, between multiple options or one of two. Then you have repetition, which means that your program is going to loop. Example. If it is that you want to write an algorithm which is going to accept 100 numbers, you are not going to um, declare 100 different variables. All you have to do is to declare one and have your program loop 100 times instead of you trying to accept all that data. So what is our selection control structure? So here now we're basically going to define. So selection control structure, this is a type of control structure. This type of control structure represents a condition, which is a choice between two actions, depending whether, um, whether the condition is true or false. In, it's like a crossroad situation. You're, you're at a crossroad and you want to know whether you're supposed to go left or you're supposed to go right. What is going to um, dictate or have you deciding on going left? What is going to, what is the condition for you to go right, right? Then is it that um, if you go right, what is going to be the possible outcome? Or is it that you're going to say, all right, I'm going to go right right now 
But if I go right and I don't reach my destination by X period, then I am going to go left. And that is how the true and false aspect would come into play. All right, so continuing selection control structure. So the selection control structure represents decision making abilities of the computer. Now let's go again. The sequence we have three different control structures we have sequence sequence uses the three basic operations of a computer it uses input processing output that is all your algorithm is going to have example the input aspect it is going to ask the user to enter a value and you're going to store it in multiple or one variable name Processing, there's some calculation that will be done. Output, there is going to be a result that you're going to display to the users, right? So now we are at the fourth operation of a computer, which is decision making. And that is where your selection control structure comes into play. Now, keywords that are used in the selection control structure, we have if, then, else, and if. Um, we will, depending on the type of selection control structure, you won't use all, but the basic um, terms, if, then, else, and if. All right. So when we're, used, when we're looking on the selection control structure, we said that this is going to take the, th these are the operations of the ALU. ALU works on mathematical operations, which, will, which includes logical operations. Logical operations um, are your selection control structures. So, because of that now, we have different signs that we use. So, the condition in the if statement is usually expressed with one of the following relational operators. Less than. Same sign as what you would use in math. This is your left hand. Curve your left hand and that gives you the less than sign. Greater than equal to less than equal to no this all right ready so what we were saying before is that for you to use the for you to select your condition or to write your condition you need to use relational operators the relational operators that you use in maths even though they would be the the, the same thing you can't find those on the keyboard so hence when it comes to less than or equal to, greater than, equal to, not equal to, we have different, we combine the, the signs. So less than, you won't join the line underneath for less than or greater than. So what you would do is write the less than sign followed by the equal sign. Equal less than is incorrect. Um, less than followed by the equal sign greater than followed by the equal sign um, for for not equal to it's not the equal sign with the stroke going through it the not equal sign is basically the less than sign followed by the greater than sign and those are your relational operators that must be used in your condition go ahead Kaljan. All right, so those are our relational operators. Less than, greater than, equal, less than, equal, greater than, equal, not equal to. So types of selection construct. And this is what I think Matthew was asking. You have different types of, you have if then. This for the if then we're going to look into each. So the types of selection construct if then, if then else, and then we have the nested if. 
the last one is called a nested if, means that you will have multiple if statements in the if. That probably don't make no sense right now, but we're coming to that part. So three types of select, selection constructs, if then, if then else, nested if, which is if then else if. All right, so here we have our if then. Your if then is going to have one condition, or no, it's going to have all if statements will have one condition. However, the operations after the condition is only one. What does that mean? It means that there's no false part to this. So this is only going to execute a particular task or set of tasks only if the condition is true. There's no false part to it. Exa um, your syntax for your if then is if, keyword if, the condition followed by the word then and one or more instructions. That is whether you have um, calculations that need to be done and your end if. End ifs are important, but we are going to look on each of those. Example. So here now, let's say we are trying to find out if a person is going to get A based on their grade. We don't want to find out if the person is having a letter grade for B, C, D, or if them fail. We just want to know if it is that the person is going to get an A. So we're going to have if, which is our keyword here, percentage, this part, so this is your greater than sign. So if percentage is greater than or equal to 90, we want to assign A to the variable name grade. That's it. Notice there's no false aspect. So this part here, This part here will only execute if the condition right here is true. So if the person grade is not greater than or equal to 90, let's say the grade is 89, nothing will happen. If the person's grade is 70, nothing will happen in, in that regard. Are we clear? Yes, Matthew, this part is only showing just the if section when we're going to do a question which is going to look on the entire um, algorithm. So this part is just showing you the extract which is just key in on, keying on the if part. All right, so moving on to the next type of if statement now. So here we have our if then else. So based on the if then else, we have two um, we have two different block of operations that will be executed. One, if the condition is true, and the second one, if the condition is false. So if your boss leave you in the morning. For some persons, it is a if then, because if the boss leave them, they might go back home. For other persons, it is a if then else. So if the boss leave you, you're going to try and catch Mr. Blair, or you're going to take a taxi. So that, that is the difference now with the if and the if then. If is only going to execute the instructions if the condition is true, only if the condition is true. If then else, it is going to test the condition. If the condition is true, then it will carry out the first set of instruction. If the condition is false, then it is going to carry the second set of instruction. 
So let's look on the syntax for the if then else. So our format is if condition then or instruction if it is true. And notice now my second if. No, oh, hold on, sorry, that part. So one or more instruction which will be carried out if the condition is true. That's the first one there. Else, one or more instructions that will be carried out if the condition is false, then your end if. So we have two set of instructions. So here, if condition is true, which is a yes, do this. If condition is false, do this. This is all that it is doing. So the true part is always first and then the false part is after the else. Example. So if price, so if price is less than 50, then what should happen if this condition is true? We want to apply a discount of 10%. Now remember last week when we said that um, it's best to start practicing with 0 0.1 um, or decimal convert. It's best to start practicing converting your percentage to decimals because when you transition into program implementation, you can't use the percentage sign. So this is basically saying that we are finding 10% of the price. So let's continue now. So if the price is less than 50, we're offering a 10% discount. So here we have our variable name, which is discount, and we're telling the system to calculate 10% of the whatever is stored in price and store that new figure in discount. Else, so if it is greater than 50 now, what should happen? We're telling the system now that we need to find 20% of the price and store it in the variable name discount. And then we close our, in, um, our if statement right here. All right. All right. Let's move on to the next one, guys. Let me see if we can finish up this before six minutes. All right. So moving on now to our nested if. Our nested if is basically where you have multiple if statements within one. So... Um, you have true, false, true, false, true, false, in essence. So um, let's say we're applying a letter grade to the students based on their overall average. So A is for 80 and above. B, it would be for 70 and above. And then C would be for 65 and above. So there now you would get a nested if because it's not just one condition, you have multiple conditions. All right, so our syntax here now. So we have if condition, then the first set of instruction. So if it is true, it will do this. If now this is false, we're going to line up. So we have our else, our second condition, Next instruction, else again, next set of instructions. So here now is our nested if. So we are going to have our first condition. If this condition is true, it will do this. It will carry out this instruction. However, if the condition is false, if this condition is false, it's not going to do this. So it's going to move on now to check this condition. If this condition meets the criteria, then it will carry out this. Good? However, if this one is now false, 
it will carry out this instruction. So that's your nested if. So like how Kaljan was saying, he must conserve on money. So if it is that his boss is to leave him, so here the thing now. So if you catch the boss, you're supposed to go on the bus. That's the first part here. So if you catch the bus, go on the bus, right? Simple. So one, that is the condition. If bus is there, go on to bus. But you go out there and the bus is not there. So what's it now? So if bus is not at particular location, call your parents to take you to school, right? Bus is not there, call your parents and they say, yo, me not come for you, you know. So your next option now is now to take taxi. So that now is your nested if right there. Right. So if you notice, we have end if here, which is closing this if. We have end if, which is closing this if statement. All right, so let's look on the concept now. Please ignore this little girl right here. We're going to start from down here. So we're understanding the end if for persons. Good. So here we have this young lady. Hi, cutie. So she is going to her teacher, right? To go to her teacher, there's a door right here. So she needs to go through this door. So here she opens the door, goes through the door. All right. So we're no longer focusing on this lady here. We're moving to this one. So she's still not where her teacher is. So she's going to go through this door. This door is locked, but she's going to open the door and she's going to go through. This is where she is right now. So she was here, went through this door, here, and she went through this door. So she's right here now. And she has to go through this door to reach to her teacher. Each door is an if statement. Each door is an if statement. So she's now at her teacher. She, she spoke to her teacher. She discussed whatever it is. Now it's time for her to leave. So if you look on the last example, we had the end if lining up with the last if that you had good for each door so here we have this door here this door here this door here this is the first door that she went through however it will not be the first door that you close and it's the same concept with your end if the last if statement you close that first and you move um how would you say that so you're opening the doors and you're opening the doors and they're going to transition to your right. But when you're closing the door, you're going to start. No, hold on. Yes. So when you open the door, you're starting from left and you're moving from left to right. That's each if statement. When you're closing the door now, you're going to move from right to left. Let's look now. So here she's leaving. Here she's leaving. Good. So she's going to close the last door that she went through. Good. Notice that door closed. So what would happen now is that there's this, the, this door is your end if. We're closing the last door we went through first until she reaches back to the exit. Same thing now. You're at your second if statement. So you have to close this if statement now for you to leave. So we close. Mm. Right. One. So we close this one. So this was our first door that we had. This was our last door that we had open, but we closed it first. This is our second door that we had open. We closed that second. So no, now first. this would be her last door. So you're going to transition and close the door there. And that's the concept of your end if. So let's look on, let's look on an example. So here, 
we have the if statement. So we're checking to see the percentage is for the student. Based on the percentage, you will be assigned a letter grade. So here we have the condition. Mm -hmm. The condition is if percentage is greater than or equal to 90. So here we're including 90. All right. So here, if the condition, if the condition here is percentage is greater than or equal to 90, which means that with the equal sign, we're including 90. So once your grade is 90 to 100, your letter grade is A. Good? But here we are at this spot now where your letter grade is not. No. No. Your letter grade is not 90 and above. Boom. Which would mean now that this condition is false. So if this condition is false, we cannot execute this instruction. So we move on to or else. So else, we must have a next condition now. What's our next condition? So here, It says if percentage is greater than or equal to 80, then then we're to assign letter B. Good. So once it is that your grade is 80 to 90, you're going to get B. So if this condition is true, it means that your letter grade will be B. But we're still not at that point. Your grade is not greater than 80 and it is not greater than 70. Which would now mean that this condition is false and this instruction cannot be executed. So we have to move on now to the next aspect. <clears throat> so we have else. What's our next condition? If percentage is equal, greater than or equal to 70, then assign letter C. Good? So our condition is right here. Once your percentage, which is your variable name, has a grade which is greater than 70, good, not greater than 80, so it must be greater than 70 but less than 80, you're going to get, so once this condition is true, you're going to get C as your letter grade, good? Still, you don't fit in. As your grade is not greater than 90, your grade is not greater than 80, and your grade is still not greater than 70. So you are oh. still not represented here. So that would mean now that this condition is false. The, the means condition. that you're going to make it. And this condition, which means that this instruction will not be executed. So what is it we're going to do? We're going to move on now to the else aspect. So it says else, letter grade is D. So if you don't fall into this category at A, you don't fall into the category at B, you don't fall into the category at C, then it means now that this instruction will be executed at D. So the letter grade that would be assigned would be D. Now, if you had a grade which was greater than 90 or equal to 90, it means that all of this here would not be checked because you would already meet the criteria in the same aspect that if it is that you were not greater than 90 but you were greater than or equal to 80 then the system wouldn't bother to transition let me change the color here to transition to the greater than or equal to 70 or to give you the the d right there 
All right? And that's that part. We said that you are going to take each if statement as a door. We went through this door. But when we went through this door, we didn't see what we want wanted. So we had to open a next door, which is our second if statement right here. So when we went through this door, still not see what we want. So we went through a third door, right? When we went through this door, still never find, but we found it in the L section here, which means that we didn't necessarily have to open the next door, we just found it in a corner in this room, right? So now that we found what we want, we need to come out of the, the, the building, the rooms. So we're going to close off. So we don't want anybody to know that we were there. So we're going to close the door, take up what we want, and leave in good order. So we close the door that we went in last, end if. Good? So we will now reach. So we close this door. So we are now in this room here and we're going to close that door and enter into the first room that we went into and close that one good so that's the end if concept so in essence look guys when you write your if statements it is going to transition like this because you're going to indent away so you have a if statement right here then you have a if statement right here. Then you have a if statement right here. But when you're closing, you're going to go like this. So we close this if. Then we're going to close this if. Then we're going to close this if. So Read the question. So guys, when you get a question like this and it tell you the variable name, use the variable name. Don't even bother trying to make up a next variable name. Use the variable name given. So read it says a number, read a number n. n. So you're going to ask the user to enter a value and store it in the variable name n. If n is greater than 100, add 10 to the number. Print the number and the result. Now tell me what type of if statement we're going to use here. We have three types. All right, let's look on the result. All right, so this part, what's this part? What does this part represent? All right, so this part is the name of our program or algorithm. That's what I was asking. So this part on the screen, that's the name of your program or algorithm. <laughs> Here we have our declaration and we only have one variable. Good. We said that, so this is the name or declaration. We're moving on now to the body. Body must be enclosed between start and stop and you must indent away from start. So first thing now, we need to give instruction to the user. So we want them to enter a number. Good. Good Colin, good um, Chandra, yes, that's your condition. So we ask user to enter a number, good. Now we need to store that number in a variable and we use the read. So read n, good. So here we have, so if n is less than, so this is greater than, if n is greater than 100, then, what do we want the system to do? What didn't declare result, guys? So result should be here. Let me put it there. So we have a next um, variable name. Or you could have something else there. I'm going to tell you what else you could have. But because we have result, then result is now going to be a variable name. But what you could have also, if you don't want to use result, is that you could have n you could have n is equal to n plus 10. all right so that's two ways all right let's look on question two 
So it says input the age of a person. If the age is greater than 40, output mature person. Otherwise, output young person. Now the first question was an if then construct. Here we're seeing where we have two instructions to be um, executed based on the condition. So therefore, this now will be an if then else construct. Let's look on the solution for this. So the first thing we're going to have is the name of our pseudocode or what is it that this pseudocode algorithm is going to do. So we need to give it a name. So I'm going to have this as age of person. That's the name there. Followed by my declaration. So let's look on the variables. So it said that we are to accept age, that's one. Do we need to manipulate the age? No. Um, so therefore, because there's no manipulation here, we need not introduce a next variable. So then we're going to have start. And we said that we indent away from start because this now will be the body of our pseudocode. So now we need to write our instruction to the user. So we want them to enter age. So because that when we're going to transition into Pascal, and when we transition into Pascal, we want it to be smooth. So our output instruction, we're using the word write instead of output print or display. So I'm going to have write, open brackets, open quotations. Whatever is in quotation, that is what will be displayed um, as text in your program. So here we want to write enter age. So after you enter the age, we want to store it in a variable. So we're going to have read age. And what you have at read here must match what you have at your declaration. After which, we're going to have our selection construct now, which is our if statement. So it did say that if age is greater than 40, we're to output mature person, otherwise output young person. So I'm going to have if condition goes in its own bracket. So we're checking the variable. And that's the first thing that you're going to write, the variable name that you're checking, which is age. What is it we're checking it for? We can't write the word greater than, so we're going to use the sign. It didn't say greater than or equal to, it only said greater than. So it says if the age is greater than 40, it didn't say if it is greater than or equal to. Let me put it down the bottom so you can still see the question. So here. So if age is greater than, and the greater than sign is always on the right, greater than 40, no equal sign, again, close bracket, then what should happen? We need to output mature person. So again, we're going to use the word right because this is an this this now is something that we want to output to the screen so in and we must display that in quotation so you're going to type now mature person close quotation close bracket else so the else part now we'll check will be um for the else whatever instruction is there this is what will be executed if the condition is false, which means that if the persons are less than 40. So we write right again. So this is going to tell now that we're outputting open quotes because we want to output text, young person. Close quotation. Right? And we said now, breaking top, 
for each if statement you must have an end if so we try and get it in line now with your if because when you line it up now it signifies which if you are closing right there's nothing else so we stop to say that we are now finished with the algorithm and put it right here so we have age of person that's the name of our pseudocode algorithm here then we have our declaration which is listing the variables that we are using um, and we are only using age we have the body of our algorithm which is start and close within start and stop we have the instruction to the user and our input which means that we're taking whatever the user enter as their age and we're going to store it the number the user enter as their age and we're going to store it in the variable called age the if statement here right the variable name first that you're checking what is the condition which is greater than 40 then what is it that you want to output so here we have one instruction if the condition is true we have one instruction if the condition is false then we close the if statement and close our program all right so let's move on to the next question all right question number three all right so i think i'm going to have to switch so that we can do this question so it says at a studio at a stadium sorry a stadium has four stands a b c and d the admission fee for stand a is a hundred dollars stand b is 150 stand c is 200 stand d is 300 read a stand and num and the number of spectators in the stand calculate the number of calculate and print the revenue for the stand all right so i had to switch out to microsoft word so that we'll be able to see everything that's happening because i have ocd let me fix this all right let's give a name for this so we're going to name this stadium register no stadium revenue that's going to be the name of our algorithm here and we're then going to have our declaration what is it that we're going to need so one what did it ask us to get from the user so it said read a stand so we're going to need stand no that's in one stand well, let's use s s for stand so we can we are going to accept stand and we're going to um accept number of spectator um after we accept that it says that we are to calculate the revenue for the stand so we are going to have a next one by the name of rev revenue shortening so we have s which is for the stand num spec that's for the number of spectators and we have rev which is for the revenue now if there's any other variable that we need to add we'll just come back to the decoration section let's move on to the body must which is enclosed and start again for good programming practice in bent away from start so there is nothing here that we need to initialize so we now move on to accepting information from the user so we are going to output to the screen or output what we would want in our program to tell the user so here we're going to have enter oh, I left out my quotation. enter the name of the enter the letter 
of the stand. We try to be clear with our instructions that we want to give the users. Then we're going to have read and we're going to read S because that is what we have for the stand. All right. Then we're going to now ask for the number of spectators in the stand. So we'll have right again, enter the number. And we're going to store that now in our variable called open bracket um numspec and again please remember that your variable name must match what you have in your declaration all right so the let's move back to the top so after accepting that we now need to check the stand that the persons are entering in so that we may calculate the revenue so we're going to move on to our if statement if let me split the screen so that we can see the question while it is that we are working on working on this. I don't have to be moving back and forth. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if so, let's check this down now. Condition. First condition, so what we're actually doing is our nested if. So our first condition is if S, always write the variable that you are checking, the name of the variable that you're checking first. Then you write your relational operator. So what we want, we want to check if stan is equal, not greater than, not less than, we want to know what it is equal to. So if it is equal to A, and once it is that we are searching the variable for text it must be enclosed in quotation so if s is equal to a close bracket then what do we want it to do okay right? we want it to calculate rev so rev now would be equal to stand a is 100 so it would be equal to num underscore spec times 100 right so if it doesn't meet that condition we now move to else if what's our next condition now we're checking for the next time same thing again so if s is equal to b and we said that that must be in quotation close bracket then what do we want to happen rev will be equal to numspec i'm going to copy that so that i can just change it numspec times what's it for stand b 150 right else let me just copy this and change it as we go along all right else Ooh. Why is it doing that? All right. So if stand is equal to C, in this case, what do we want it to do? What's the cost? The cost of stand C is 200, so it would be number of spectators times 200. So here now, we're going to have our else, and then we want to check if stand D. All right, so here, if it doesn't meet stand A, stand B, or stand C, it must be stand D. Now, in most cases, persons will say, or in most cases, persons will just put L, else, and put revenue equals spec, underscore spec, like what we have here, times 300. Now, what if the user enters E, F, G, Z, W, L, M, N, O, P? 
that is why I am going to put the if statement again. So it, it restricts errors right there. So we don't want, when we tease that, we transition into program implementation and the user enter, as I said before, any other letter other than A, B, C, and D, and it would still work as what would happen if it doesn't match A, B, or C, what would happen is that once a next letter is entered, it would calculate it at $300, but we don't want that. We only want A, B, C, and D. And anyhow, any other letter is entered, it was supposed to work. So we're going to put the next if statement. So if S, which is our stand, is equal to D, quotation D, then what do we want it to do? We're going to calculate rev. So rev is now equal to numspec. Oh, I think I copied this. So if the stand is equal to D, then what we want now is to calculate the revenue. So the revenue now would be numspec times $300. Right? So we covered A, B, C, and D. All right, let me take it off the split screen now. All right. So now we need to close our if statements. So here we are again. Each if statement is a door that we went through. We went through this door, this door, this door, this door. So now we're leaving and we want to come all the way back up here. Now each door that we go through, we need to close. So let's close the last door first. Because if we're going to go all the way back up the top, we have to come out of this room. So that's in the right there. So we close the last one first. All right. So it's in line. So let's close this if no. I'm going to have my end if right there. Ooh. All right. So I need this one no. Oh, it went on another page and I don't want it to do that. All right, so I have to reduce the font size there. All right, so I closed this door, this door, so I know I need to close these two. So we are now in this room, consider it a room. So we are in this room, we're going to come out that room and close the door as though we were never there. All right, and yeah, so that's that one. Ooh. And this. All right, so we're going to look now on the last part. So we have one, two, three, four if statements, and we have four in this. So it says now that we are to calculate and print the revenue for the stand. So let's print the revenue now. So we're going to have right but open right open um, we're going to have right open bracket open quotation so total revenue is this open quotation and then the variable name which is rev close bracket and then we are going to have our stop all right let me let this fit on one page so let's look on the complete algorithm here so here this now is our nested if so we have the name of our algorithm or declaration we have three variables here the body of our algorithm so here, enclose between our start and our stop. We have our instruction to the user. Then we have our selection construct, which is our if statement. Then we have our final output and then the ending of our program. So this is our second type of control structure where we have input, which is at read. 
we have processing, which is our calculation. We have output, which is right here or right here. And we also have our selection, which is the if statement. So I hope you understand. I'm going to post a question in the comment section for you to do. First person to get it right will win a prize. Thank you for watching.